Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to do something that no sane person should ever do. I'm going to go look at the comments on one of my videos. Specifically, we're going to look at the one where I covered this. This is an LM2596. It's a DC to DC converter. And I did a video, I'll put a link to it up here, but I did a video where I was using this for an automotive application. This part is relatively cheap. It's sub $2, but it has some problems with it uh, that make it less friendly for using in an automotive application. So I did a little bit of uh, modifications and built it up with this. Anytime you want to find somebody that obviously knows more than you, all you have to do is put it on the internet. They will gladly come in and tell you how much more they know. Uh, in this case, though, there were actually a few comments that were really questions that I thought were interesting. They at least uncovered some problems that, you know, maybe I didn't cover in the video. Let's go take a look at some of those questions and see if we can address them and see if we can learn anything. If you watched the previous video, you'll remember that I put in this shot key diode here. This is the actual part number that I used on 1N5822. The purpose of this shot key is to prevent reverse polarity from damaging this. So normally this one takes positive here and negative here. And if you hook it up in reverse polarity, like most things, they don't like it. Oftentimes it will damage it, cause smoke to come out, whatever. In some cases, in fact, the current will get high enough that it can actually melt wires or even cause fires. So what we want to do is we want to avoid that because I might not be the only person messing with this. I might put it into something and give it to someone else. The reality is I hook things up reverse polarity more often than I care to admit. Usually I'm just in a hurry or I actually look at it and just see it wrong. So to protect those situations, I put in this shot key diode. One thing I didn't do though is test what happens when you uh, reverse polarity connect one without the protection. So Let's do that. I suspect what is going to happen is this thing will actually uh, let out some smoke and it will be kind of interesting and exciting, but let's hook it up to a power supply and find out. I'm going to hook a bench supply up right here and we'll feed this 12 volts. When I complete the circuit, you'll see it drops all the way down to about three volts and is consuming about three amps, which is basically the maximum that this power supply can source. What's happening is it's just going to an open short and the power supply is protecting itself. I don't see or smell any smoke, but it definitely is getting warm. It's pretty toasty. Let's find a bigger power supply. I've got this beast laying around just for things like this. This thing can deliver up to 25 amps. So let's hook it up and see what it does. Here we go. Well, that's pretty anticlimactic. I've hooked it back up with normal polarity to that power supply, and you can see we've got 11.3 volts coming in here. But let's look at the output. If I can hit it here. There we go. You can see absolutely nothing. So it didn't do anything uh, fun like, you know, catch on fire or smoke, but it is definitely dead. There's something going wrong inside of it. So reverse polarity definitely destroys this part. The next comment really is about the quality of the parts. So this module costs off of Amazon, I think about $2, a little bit less. You can get them even cheaper if you order them direct. The LM2596 uh, part by itself, if I buy those off of like DigiKey, they are more than that. Now the comment says that it's probably because the part is fake. I guess that the reason is because of uh, quantities. They're able to build these in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, whereas I'm buying a single unit. But it's still a, a valid question. Is the quality of this module uh, low enough or the parts on this module low enough that it actually affects it? It is rated for three amps, but can it deliver three amps? Let's go take a look and see how we would test that. As I said, this is rated for three amps of output. So the easiest way for us to 
measure this or to test this is to do something that's going to consume three amps. So if this is five volts, if we have three five ohm power resistors and these are hooked up in parallel, by Ohm's law and parallel resistance calculation, this is going to draw three amps. I don't have anything that easily will tell us what the, uh, the power draw here is, but nicely, this is effectively a closed system and the power supply that is feeding this does give me the amperage that it is uh, producing. So if we can look at the current that's coming in over here, we can calculate what the current is over here if we know the efficiency of this uh, power supply. Nicely, somebody else has already done the efficiency calculations on these at 5 volts and 12 volts in, so 12 in, 5 out, and 3 amps of current. And it's 75%, 74 and change, so let's call it 75% efficient. So if we know what the wattage here is in theory, so if we know what the wattage is going through here, so how much it's actually consuming in power, and we know that this is 75% efficient, then we can calculate exactly what the current... So if we know what the, the power being drawn here is... So if we know what the power being drawn here is, we can then take that and multiply it by our 75% efficiency, and then we know what the power being used here is. And then from that power number, we can calculate how many amps are going through this. So let's hook this up and take a look at the power supply and find out how much current is coming through here, then do all the math and figure out how much current we're actually getting as an output here. When I power this up at really 12 volts input here, you can see it's drawing about 1.6 amps of current. Now, instead of doing all the calculations manually, we'll just feed this into Claude, and you can see the output here, 12 volts, it's 1.6 amps in, 75% efficiency. Output uh, at 5 volts is 2.88 amps. Really, I don't think that it is a case of inferior parts or low quality module. It's outputting 2.9 amps, at an estimated 75% efficiency, so I'd say it's pretty close to the three amps that it's rated for. The last comment I want to look at, and there were actually a couple of them, was to just use a car charger. Something like this. First off, I don't think they actually listened to the assignment. I'm building something that goes into an enclosure that'll either be down in a console or maybe under the hood, under the seat, somewhere like that. So using something like this really isn't convenient. I don't want to have a cable running across the floor or something like that. I want something that is hardwired into the car so that you don't ever have to think about it. But since the question came up, let's take a look at actually how one of these works. So this is designed to go into a power socket or an old school cigarette lighter uh, socket. You can see it says 2.4 amps on both. Don't know if that means 2.4 amps total or 2.4 amps each, but through the magic of buying two, we have the internals for one now too. Internally, this thing is really, really simple. So this is our ground. And then we've got our input power, 12 volts here. Now, if you look down inside, it's got an IC here and another one over here. And those are actually the same part. They're an HC2018A. And that part is rated for 2.4 amps. Initially, when I was looking at this, I said, well, we've got a pair of inductors and we've got couple of capacitors. I think this is a noise suppression one hooked to the ground, so I think these are the ones from those two parts. I was wondering if maybe that these things were put in in parallel for redundancy, but as I think about it, you recall it had two of these and they were both marked for 2.4 amps. I think one of these powers one plug the other one powers the other. So in fact, if one of these goes bad, if you draw too much power or something like that and you burn one of them up, the other one will continue to run. 
so I think this has two separate circuits for each one of the plug sockets. Now, interestingly, there are no other components on here other than the inductor, the IC, and the capacitor. Again, we've got this one extra cap here connected to the ground, but that's it. There are no other resistors, no, no diodes, so there is absolutely no protection on here from ESD uh, for reverse polarity. Obviously, reverse polarity probably is not a big deal since you're just going to plug this into the socket and it is hooked up the way that it's hooked up. This has the same, I guess, downsides as the 2596 module, but it actually has a few less things than the original and definitely less than the things that I put on it. The other downside here is obviously form factor is kind of a pain. If you wanted to use this in an embedded product, you know, soldering this down or whatever would be challenging. You could probably pull this off, desolder it, and solder on your uh, power wires here, but it would not be very friendly. It is much, much easier to use something like this for an actual enclosed project. That's it. We've looked at three different questions or comments on this LM2596 power supply. Hopefully you found some of that interesting or useful. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. This video shows I do actually read those. If some comment comes up that I think we can learn from, I'll do another video addressing that. Otherwise, thanks for watching.